Emotional intelligence. I'm sure you heard this uh, this phrase, these words before of like how it's important for us to have, you know, this emotional intelligence. And when you think about it, it it's actually essential. Um, it, it's a determining factor of the quality of our life, the quality of our relationships, the quality of our profession, of our business, of, you know, our, our parenting, like everything that we do in life, well, at least the most important areas, the most important things revolve around people. They revolve around relationships with those people. They revolve around your ability to connect, to communicate, to build trust, to create healthy functional relationships with with each of those people. And that's going to really determine and define your life and the quality of it. So emotional intelligence is at the the very foundation of what's going to determine the quality of your life. So you have more ability to connect emotionally. You're going to have more ability to be able to communicate, to be persuade, to um, to love, to um, share ideas, to come up with solutions. Like everything just raises. And actually, there is a statistics that show that the the eighty percent of the top producers, I mean the top producers in in any industry, in in anything, the ones who are the top producers are the ones who have the highest emotional intelligence. And even when you think about sports, like, you know, athletics, people who are in the Olympics, you know, uh, yes, there is a very high level of physical, you know, conditioning, physical skill, you know, something that they develop, they, the strength, the endurance, like all this, they master the physical self, right? But even beyond that, there is an emotional mastery that they need to be able to compete at high levels. All the, the, the top performers, top achievers in any industry have to have a high level of emotional intelligence. Now, during this course, you're going to learn what emotional intelligence is, what the purpose and power of your emotions are. What is an emotion? You know, why do people have emotions or what's the difference of somebody having an emotion and the emotion having them? You know, why do people have certain triggers? Why do people have buttons, right? Where you're like, ah, you just pushed my button. You know, why do people, why are some people very reactive and defensive? Why are other people, you know, more free and more confident? Why are some people more afraid and more timid? You know, there's there's reasons to all these things, and it has to do with emotions, emotional intelligence, understanding what the emotion is, understanding you know, where they come from, how we can, you know, generate them. Can we generate new ones? Can we interrupt old ones? Can we, you know, where, where is the beginning and end of this thing called emotions? You know, because the truth is when you begin to really understand this stuff, it becomes like a superpower, Um, a superpower because you're not offended. You're not always feeling rejected. You're not going up and down according to what other people are doing or not doing. You're not. You don't need people's acceptance. You're not. You know, being caught up in people's distractive things that they're saying or doing, and you know, getting caught up into their roller coaster, all because you you have an understanding of emotions. This will really set you up to be in the top ninety percent of the top performers in every area when you begin to raise the quality of your emotional intelligence. And that's what we're going to be doing during uh, during this. I'm going to be teaching uh, where they come from, you know, what you are made up of, how to control them. You know, what are the most powerful things that we need to know when we are leading people, when we are, you know, persuading people, when we are building relationships, when we are creating a higher quality of life, I'm going to be sharing the key sen- essential things of the power and purpose of emotions. And this is the emotional intelligence. Okay, so first you need to understand that you are three parts as a human being. You are a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. You are a spirit, soul, and body. You are the essence of who you are is the spirit. That's that's the essence of who you are. Now your soul is your mind, your emotions, and your will. That's your mind, emotions, your will. That's what your soul is. And then your body, that's your physical vehicle that your spirit and soul uses to express who you are to the physical world around you. Because it's a physical world, right? And you need a physical vehicle to be able to interact and to to live amongst. Now, 
if you want to master your life, you know, you want to really be in the, the top 90 of top performers, uh, you need to be able to master each of these three areas of who you are. You are a spirit, soul, and a body. So most people don't even have, you know, an understanding that they have these three parts. And if they do, they don't dig any deeper of like, okay, well, if this is who I am, you know, I guess I should have some kind of self-development plan for each of these areas that make me who I am. Because at the level I am of my capabilities in each of these areas is going to determine my overall level. It's going to average me out, right? Like if, if I have, you know, high capability, high, you know, consciousness of my spirit and I develop myself to where I'm strong in my spirit. And that doesn't mean, you know, religion doesn't mean any of that, but are you doing something to strengthen your spirit and what's, what strengthens you? Maybe it is, you know, having faith in church and prayer, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's, you know, doing yoga, meditation, you're, you know, sitting in front of the ocean doing affirmations, you know, you're breathing techniques, you're doing, you know, there's so many different things, but are you doing something intentionally, on purpose, with purpose to build your spirit? Because think about it, like if you are one, like weak in one of these, it's going to kind of lower your average it's going to affect because all these three parts even though they're you know one in its own they all impact and affect and influence one another so you can have a strong spirit and soul but if your body is messed up it's going to limit you in your life you can have an amazing strong fit body but if your soul is all messed up your spirit is all weak it's going to affect the overall you know quality of your life so the key is to understand what are these three parts you know what can i do to begin to develop myself in each of these three parts so that, that i just want you to think about that first because i'm going to get into another slide where i'm going to you know break each one of these downs for you and highlight each one so that you can you know come up with a plan for yourself but just think of that that you are three parts three parts make one whole like kind of like an egg right you got the shell you got the white and then you got the yolk but it's one egg you are three parts. You are a spirit, soul, and a body. A spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. Now, are you intentionally developing yourself spiritually? You know, on a system where you've been consistent with it, not here and there. Are you, and something that works that you can measure that you're building yourself and even impacting others through it. Are you intentionally developing your soul? Do you understand your soul? Are you strengthening your soul? Are you bringing healing in your soul? Are you doing the different things necessary so that you can raise the quality of your over your your life overall and set yourself up to win? To win in everything that you do. Why? Because you are consistently on purpose, with purpose, developing, strengthening your soul. Now, what about your body? You know, are you developing? Are you intentional? Are you on purpose, with purpose, with the system, being consistent? Living a lifestyle that is setting up your body for high energy. For It doesn't mean you have to go be a bodybuilder, but are you taking care of yourself, self-care, that health and wellness? Because that's going to generate or and create what kind of energy that you're going to have. And the kind of energy you're going to have is going to determine you know, what you produce in your life, how competitive you are, how efficient you are, how present you are, how patient you are. How you know that energy determines so much, and a lot of that is connected, directly connected to how you're treating your body. So you are three parts. Now, I want you just to acknowledge that, accept that, embrace that. Like, okay, yeah, it makes sense. I have these three parts. Now, what the heck are they, right? Now, this is what we're going to get into, but just understand you are three parts. And if you really want to master your life and raise the quality of your life overall to where you feel this sense of dominion, this sense of certainty, this, this sense of even prediction of what you're going to create in your future because you know what you're doing internally, you know that you're setting yourself up to win. This, set, this really sets a whole different mindset when you begin to develop these three parts on purpose. So now let's get into that. But just embrace that you are three parts. And if you want to win, you got to have a system, a strategy of how you're going to develop each part of who you are. All right, so let's talk about the spirits. Again, the spirit is the essence of who you are. Okay, so we live in two worlds at the same time. We have the spiritual world and this physical world. We have this spirit inside of us. We have our physical body. 
Now, when you sleep, your physical body will sleep, but your spirit will stay awake. And that's why there's sometimes where you have these dreams that seem so real, right? Like, you're like, man, that seems so real. A lot of times it is. A lot of times because your spirit has actually had some kind of interactions in the spiritual realm, encounters in the spiritual realm, and that's why it feels so real. This is why, you know, even in the spirit, you'll have like different connection, a different bonding, being in tune with certain people. Like you can feel their spirit, right? Like sometimes you're, say you're sitting somewhere and like somebody's looking at you and for some reason you just can feel it. And then when you turn, somebody was looking at you. You ever feel that? Or or in another spiritual thing that happens we don't understand is like uh, we'll, we'll be thinking about somebody, right? All of a sudden we're thinking about them and then they text or they call. You're like, what the heck? I was just thinking about you. I, I, why? It's because there's a spiritual thing that's happening there also. And when I'm talking about the spiritual realm like this, I'm not even getting into religion or anything like that. But there is a, a reality, a spiritual reality that is happening in and around you. And if we don't acknowledge and learn about this, we're not going to be able to use it to our advantage. And actually, we're just going to be, you know, swayed back and forth according to what's happening in the spiritual realm. And without the understanding, we'll have nothing to stand down. We won't be able to act responsibly, you know, be able to take action with with strategy because we don't even understand it and it's not like this abstract thing either like understanding spiritual things will help you in your sales and business it will help you in your parenting to be able to persuade to be able to connect with somebody and build trust at the deepest level in their spirit to be able to encourage to be able to empower to be able to love to be able to teach to be able to train, to be able to connect with, to be able to communicate with, to be able to do these things in a deeper sense that's beyond the physical, beyond the soul, into the spirit, into the core of who somebody is, like somebody is, there is a lot of leverage there. There's a lot of power um, to be able to understand it so you can get into somebody else's world, but there's a lot of power in understanding your own spirit and building it on a consistent basis so that you're not easily swayed. You're not up and down according to external stuff. When you have a strong spirit, it's like an anchor. You know, it's like an anchor for your soul. To where even when your soul, your mind, emotions, and will, we're getting to that later. When, when that's up and down, you'll have this spirit, this anchor in you that can see beyond. That looks for beyond what they can see that looks for beyond what they can feel, taste, and smell because there is a spiritual realm. And yes, there is a level of faith that's involved here. And it's not a faith of like not knowing. It's actually a faith of knowing, experiencing. But you have to go and actually like experience it. You have to go seek it. So with the spiritual part of who you are, there's a lot of different things that you can do. I mean, some people, you know, yes, they will go to church. Some people will, will pray, right? They have conversations with God. They'll have conversations with their God. And that strengthens their, their spiritual part of who they are. That's, that strengthens their spiritual life. It strengthens their spiritual connection with other people. So there is a power to that. You just need to understand, okay, what builds you in your spirit? Maybe it's not going to a church gathering. You know, maybe for you it's uh, reading affirmations or doing some kind of chants where there are positive things where you're, you know, encouraging yourself in your deepest parts, in your spirit. You know, these affirmations, these mantras, these things that are core values, that are standards, that are things that you're creating in your mindset to affect you in your deepest parts of who you are. So they become like lenses that you see through and life and, and that will determine on how you act and how you you know, react or, or respond to that which you're seeing and experiencing. But when you have a strong, peaceful, peaceful spirit, it makes a huge difference. Now, if you have a lot of noise going on inside of you, it's really hard to be present. It's really hard to be patient. It's really hard to be clear about things and make, you know, confident decisions when you have a lot of noise going on inside of you. And it, it starts with you being intentional with your spirit, the core of who you are. Now, this is a part of knowing who you are, right? You can't lead yourself unless you really know yourself. And a big part, a third, a third of who you are is your spirit. So what are you going to do on a consistent basis to build your spirit? 
Um, I know for myself, I, I pray. I pray all day, not just in the morning or over food. I pray throughout the day. I, I, I connect by faith with God for myself. You know, I don't go to a, an actual church all the time. I will go sometimes, um, but I, I do read the Bible. Um, you know, I consume whatever I can get my hands on that will connect me to my spirit and to my God. Like, that's something that I do on a continual basis, but it doesn't have to be like that for you. You know, maybe for you, you like to go walk in nature, in the forest, or with trees and with green. And for you, that begins to feed your spirit. You begin to feel connected to creation. And, you know, that's something that, that benefits you. It brings peace to you. You know, it strengthens you at your innermost. Maybe as you do that, you go and stop somewhere and you do some yoga. You do some, you know, some stretches, some cantations, some incantations, some yoga poses, some, you know, meditations, affirmations, maybe you do some declarations, you know, these are all different kind of things and tools, breathing exercises that will help you to connect to your spirit, that help you to build your spirit, that will help you to calm your spirit and bring peace in your heart. So you need to figure out what, what is it for you? You know, how do you, be, I do all those things, you know, I will get into the Bible, to into prayer, into church, but I'll also bring that with me as I go into the day, into the a hike, into a workout, you know, going to the beach, going on a run, like all these things is a part of my lifestyle now to where I'm constantly and consistently feeding my spirit, building my spirit, developing my spirit. And, you know, I, I read things, I watch things, all things with the purpose to, to understand the spiritual realm, dreams, visions, you know, I've developed myself over, you know, 15 years to develop these things. And now I have a lot of tools, a lot of strategies, understandings of not only to use myself when it comes to building my spirit, but also connecting with others in their spirit. And I use it for so many practical things that it's, you know, really raised the quality of my life. But without really seeking to know and then seeking to do, I, I will never be. It's to know, to do, to be. First, you have to know. You have to understand. This is you researching, understanding, like getting some clarity, learning, getting your hands on books. Okay, what is the spirit? What is the spiritual realm? How can I connect with this more? I have a whole, you know, another program. I'm not going to get too deep on it here because this is getting, you know, more emotional intelligence. So I'm not going to focus on the spiritual part, but I have a whole program that, shows you what your spirit is, you know, and, and how to build it and how to even connect with people in their spirit from across the world, like to connect with them from a distance, to even influence and persuade from a distance. Like it's really crazy, amazing, powerful uh, concepts. But right here, I want to focus on the emotional intelligence, but just understand that this is a third of who you are in the spirit. And you need to figure out okay, what builds you. And put that on this, the calendar because it's priority. It's a third of who you are. So how are you going to be consistent now in developing your spirit? Okay, now let's get into the body. We talked about the spirit. And of course, the spirit is going to, you know, affect, influence, impact the emotional state that we're going to be in, right? And we're talking about emotional intelligence. So, of course, where our spirit is going to have a, a huge factor. It's going to have a, a, a large influence. It's a big factor in how we feel, if it's going to be good quality or low quality. Same thing in our bodies. So our body has a lot to do with emotion also. Like your body has, you know, can create emotion, it can maintain emotion, it can hold emotion, it can get sick by emotion. Like your, the energy is running throughout your physical body, that energy is emotion. And, you know, whether we create it from movement, you know, because you can, like if you start to stand up tall, sit up tall, move stronger with more certainty, with a little bit more assertiveness, you know, your head is up, you're making eye contact, you're smiling, like all these different things, like just movements like that, you, you will actually generate a higher quality energy. Like you can just, you know, this is proven fact where you can just change your face. You can hold your face, make, make a, you know, a happy face for 15 seconds. If you just hold it, you actually generate a true happiness inside of you. 
or if you hold a sad face for 15 seconds, you actually start to generate a sad face. So understanding even the movement of the face would generate emotion. It's the same thing even how you sit. If if you sit and breathe shallow and sit where, you know, your your chest is caved in, you're kind of leaning over, leaning, leaning forward, your head is down and you're breathing shallow, you're going to generate a very low quality energy versus sitting up straight and your you know your shoulders go back your chest goes out your head goes up you're breathing long deep breaths not just in your chest but in your stomach your whole diaphragm just filling up filling up and if you just you know hold that for 15 seconds all of a sudden the energy that you have running through your body it changes a lot right it, it makes a huge difference so understand that your movement the way you move the way you sit the way you stand the way that you walk, all these things are actually generating and maintaining a certain type of energy. Now, if you want a higher quality, then, then you need to stand, you know, stronger, sit stronger, move stronger. You'll start to generate a stronger feeling, right? That's how it works. You dig big, deep breaths. All these things is a part of you understanding how your body plays into your emotions. Now, your body will also hold emotions. So people get like physically sick because of emotions, energies that are stuck in their body in places. And that's because they're not, they're not processing these things. And they kind of hold it in. They get mad, whether it's sad, whether it's hurt, whether it's rejection, whether it's unforgiveness, <clears throat> whether, whatever it is. Those, these are all different types of energies. And the negative ones, when we don't process it right... Our brain, because our brain wants to, to protect you, it wants to either fight or flight, right? So when there's something that happens, your brain doesn't want you to hurt. So a lot of times you'll avoid it, you won't process it right, but that energy that it created, it's still there. It's still running around in your body. And a lot of times we are actually holding it, we're dwelling on it, we're thinking we're not thinking about it, right? We're, we're trying not to think about it. We're trying to just like avoid it or, or we're actually holding and thinking and dwelling on it. But that emotion, that energy is going to be in your gut, your intestines. You know, this starts to create other issues, other physical problems for you. You can get headaches, migraines. You know, there's so many different physical illnesses, diseases, diseases, sicknesses that we can get by us holding the wrong emotion in, the wrong energies in our body. There's been so many times where, you know, people have had physical illnesses and we find that those are actually signs of something else. It's not the, the physical pain in their body. It's actually tied to unprocessed things that happen to them. And, and it's an energy that is just stuck there and creating a pain. It's actually, you know, the, the energy of their emotion is actually affecting them at a physical level. So it's amazing when we start to understand how the body, soul, and spirit work. But even like with your food and your mood. Even that directly connected to each other, like what you eat. If you eat a lot of crap, you're going to start to feel a lot of crap and, you know, look like crap and treat others like crap and your life becomes like crap because of the food that you're putting into your body. So your food is your fuel and it directly connected to your mood of how you eat, you know, your exercise or lack of it. That's going to affect your energy, the, your clarity, you know, the, if it's a good high quality or low quality energy emotions that you're going to be dealing with. You know, so you taking care of your body, drinking enough water. You know, men should be drinking at least three liters a day and women at least two liters a day. You should be hydrating your physical body. You're made up mostly of water. So just if you just start to drink enough water, that already will start to raise your quality of energy and your mood, which help you to be more productive in your life. Just water. You know, vitamin D, sunshine. That's another one. Getting enough sunshine, at least 20, 30 minutes a day on as much skin as possible. Another one is movement or exercise. You know, I just get like, you know, three to five, you know, days a week where you're working out, you know, like 30 minutes a day, getting some cardiovascular exercise, some movements, any kind of movement, just move. It's really important for your lymphatic system, which builds your immune system. Then also your foods. Are you eating whole foods? Are you eating, you know, a bunch of junk food and, you know, artificial colors, preservatives, you know, um, you know, fast food, like all these things that you know you shouldn't be doing, that if you put that stuff in your body, it lowers the quality of energy. And that that is directly connected to emotional states that you're going to either 
enjoy or not joy, right? Like you're going to have pain in your physical body. You're going to feel low. You're going to feel foggy. You're going to feel fatigued. All these different things are, can be directly connected to what you're consuming as far as food. So think every time you're putting something into your mouth, every time you're, whether it's drink or food, remember that's an offering that you're giving into this temple, into this vehicle that you only get one of. You know, so how are you taking care of your body? Doesn't mean you have to be a bodybuilder, but exercise. Get fresh air. Most people are in, you know, closed areas with dead recycled air all, all day. Whether it's in their house, they have the air conditioning on, they go to their car, they go to their office, they go back to their car, they go back to the home. <clears throat> Open windows, get circulating air. That's important for your health too. You know, um, there's also passion, doing things that you're passionate about. There's also loving relationships. These are all different things that will are healthy principles to live by, a lifestyle, not just a diet type thing. This is something you need to do on a regular basis to make sure your body is healthy. Because again, that is going to be a, a huge determining factor of what kind of emotions that you're going to be experiencing throughout the day. And also how much power you have to be able to interrupt a negative one and generate a new one. How much strength you have to be able to heal when there's sickness, you know, because that's going to make a big difference too. So, of course, your spirit, your soul, your body are all connected. They're all impacting one another. <clears throat> but I just want you to look at this part of the body of like, okay, what can I do? What kind of system, what kind of strategy can I do where I'm on a consistent basis, I'm living in a way that I'm, I'm being healthy, that I'm setting myself up, my body up to be able to win. So what are you doing when it comes to your body? All right, so now we're going to get into the soul. I know every time I get to, you know, each part of who we are, I tell you, like, this is, like, key, this is essential, but it's true. I mean, we are three parts, and each part of who we are impacts and influences and affects the other two, so all three are, are key. All three are so important to the quality of our living, and the soul is where... I mean, this is where all happens. Like the soul is your mind, emotions, and will. So this is your mindset. This is your belief system. This is your your values. This is your thoughts. And then your thoughts are, are your future in seed form. Because when you have these inward conversations in your mind, these thoughts, you begin to generate uh, images and visuals, visualizations in your mind, right? And then your brain, whether it's real or perceived in your brain, it's real. So you're creating these things inside of you through these conversations, these thoughts inwardly, and then your body will start to generate certain energies, certain emotions that run through your body because of that inward conversation that you're having. You know, you look at a situation and you'll start to develop an inward conversation about that situation. You look at a person, you'll start to develop an inward conversation about that person. You look at a problem or you look at, you know, some potential, you look at whatever you're looking at, it's kind of like a lens that you're looking through and you begin to generate an inward conversation about that thing. And, the, you know, depending on the lens that you're looking through, depending on the, the inward conversation that you begin to have and that you allow to continue is going to determine what, what kind of energy you're going to have, what kind of emotional state you're going to create for yourself. So you have stinking thinking, you're going to have uh, some stinking emotions that are running through your body, you know, so you, that's your mindset. Your emotions will determine the quality of your life. If you have good emotion, that's the quality of your living at that moment, at that time. It's good. It's happy. But then next moment, if it's in sadness and sorrow, that's where your life is at that point. Your, your emotional state is equal to the level of life that you're living in at that time. Just think about that. So your soul is where you're creating your outward reality. This is the, the inward reality that you're creating inside, and that will determine the outward reality. So if you have a bunch of chaos inside of your soul, your mind, emotions, and will, you're going to create chaos outside of you. Why? Because you have your mind, your emotions, and your will. The third part of your soul is your, your will. This is where you make decisions. This is where you decide, where you choose, right? So if if you imagine like, if you make, um, just get put three fingers out. You know, all your three fingers are extended and together. They're all in alignment right now. So you have three fingers that are out and they're all together, 
okay? They're not separated, they're all together. And think of those three fingers as your mind, emotions, and will. So that top finger is your mind, that middle one is your emotions, the bottom one is your will. Those are three parts of who you are, uh, of your soul. So when you have a fracture in your soul, it's kind of like now open your fingers so they're not together. Now they're pointed at different directions, right? There's gaps in between. Now you're kind of like giving the number three. But there's gaps in between. Now, your mind is pointed one direction. Your emotions are pointed another direction. And your will, your, your power to choose, to make decisions, to make choices is pointed in a different direction. Now, when you have undealt with issues and pains and undealt with beliefs, undealt with standards, and if there's things that are going on in you that are causing a fracture in your soul, like your fingers are being separated, now your mind is thinking one thing. Your emotions are feeling something else. And because there's no alignment, there's no agreement with your mind and emotions, it's really hard to make, you know, decisions with certainty, with confidence, knowing that you're making the right decisions. You know, you don't have a lot of clarity because you're thinking one way, but you're feeling another and you're like, oh, should I? I don't know, because there's no clarity. And, and a lot of that has to do with, with a fracture in your soul. And another way to look at this is, you know how you have, you know, people have these triggers. You know, you, we talk about triggers sometimes of like, ah, oh, what triggered you? Man, I don't know what what happened. It just that person just pushed my button, or something just you know clacked and clicked inside of me, and I lost it, or I just reacted. I don't know. I couldn't help it. I just it overcame me. It overtook me. Like we we say it in a lot of different ways, but what it is is these undealt with things in our soul that become these triggers, that become these buttons, that become these things that you know circumstances or even people can pull at the strings of them, pull at the strings of these things in our heart, and it actually starts to you know, manifest in how we talk and how we act, the facial expressions that we make. So we become like puppets to these triggers that are inside of us. And, you know, now circumstances and people have the power of this control to now push buttons to make you react a certain way. So this is this is why we react. This is why we get defensive. This is why we get angry. This is why we, you know, do all those things that we know we shouldn't be doing, but we keep doing. And we're like, ah, we feel bad about it. We're like, man, why do I keep doing that? It's because you have a fracture on your soul. Or or vice versa, you know, like when you know you should be doing something and you're like, yeah, you start to do it, but then you only do it for a temporary time. And then you end up defaulting to how you used to be. Those old habits, those old behaviors, you know what that happens? Because you have a fracture on your soul. Your soul is not whole. Your soul is not in alignment. Maybe you're achieving, but you're not in alignment, so you won't have peace in your heart. You won't have, you know, a clarity in your heart. You can have deal with guilt, shame, regret, rebellion, addiction, you know, all these different habits and behaviors that you know are that are not healthy. They're coming from these this inward reality. They're coming from these woundings, these wounds, these pains, these these things that were settled in your heart, starting from when you're a child, you know, growing up, these different experiences that you've had in your past, they start to wound you. They, they fracture your soul. And now at heart, now you create these beliefs in your mind that, you know, want to protect you, right? So like if you have been called a name before, now you develop these defenses around that. So if somebody calls you a name, you want to either fight or flight. You know, if somebody cheated on you in the past, now you create these defense mechanisms and these belief systems around that because you don't want to get hurt again. And because you don't want to get hurt again, you start to get suspicious or you see somebody who made a the same face or doing certain behaviors that reminds you of the last one. Now all your weapons come up and you'll have this fear-based, you know, decisions and these emotions. And you know, now these things are pushing your buttons because you're like, oh, no, that's never going to happen to me again. Or somebody, nobody will ever do that to me again. So now, you know, you get into this fight or flight mode. There's no peace and there's no freedom in that. And a lot of times people live this way for so long, they think it's normal. They think it's just, that's just how they are. That's just how they are brought up. That's just their personality. But it's not true. It's like these things, these pers these emotional states, these attitudes, these things that you know that are not good for you, that you don't like being. And when you're in those states, you do and you act like certain ways where you feel bad about it after. You know what I'm talking about? See, that's like living and learning how to live with your ro a rock in your shoe. Think about that. Like, you have a rock in your shoe, what do you do? You stop, you take your shoe off, you take the rock out, put your shoe back on, and you keep going, right? Like, we should learn how to do that when we have issues, a rock in our soul, a pain in our soul. 
But too often, we just like, we have this pain, we acknowledge it, we know what it feels like, we can maybe even react from it, get angry, or, but we don't deal with it, we don't really process it, and that's like leaving the shoe in our, in the rock in our shoe. And we have this offense, we have this rejection, we have this, this frustration, this irritation in us, it's like a rock in our soul, right? Now we, but we don't take our shoe off. We don't process that. We don't look at it. We don't get healing from it. We don't forgive there. And we continue just to go out through the day with this freaking rock in your shoe. And, and to the point where people live, you know, weeks, months, years, decades like this to where they keep going. They keep putting that same shoe on with the same rock and they keep, you know, getting mad at the rock. Like, oh, this freaking rock. When, whose fault is that? We just need to take the, the rock out, right? The same thing with our soul. We have rocks in our soul, and these rocks are certain pains. There are certain issues that we haven't dealt with, and we need to process them. We need to take off the shoe and look at it. Not that we're going to stay there, not that we're going to blame, but we need to look at it. That's the face it part. For you, So you first need to face it. You face it of, okay, I have a problem. Okay, I have a pain. Okay, I have these behaviors. Okay, I have these habits. Okay, I have something that I need to change. Okay, I don't have peace in my heart in this in this you know area. Okay, I, I have anger in this area. You gotta face it first. If you can't face it, you're not gonna be able to change anything. So that's the first step. You gotta when you have these issues in your soul, the way to get healing, the way to get whole is number one, face it. Face it. Face that you have a problem. Face that you have a habit or a behavior or something that you have that you did that is not healthy, that is not good. Just face it. Second thing is erase it. That's forgiveness. If it's something that you did that you feel bad about, you know, first forgive yourself. And if it's, you know, if it's good, if it's a good reason you think about this first, you might want to go apologize to that person. It's not always the case that you need to, but hey, a lot of times it is where you need to go and take responsibility and say, hey, I'm sorry for saying that. I'm sorry for doing that. You know, I, it bothered me that I did it. I know I shouldn't have done that, but I did it. And I apologize. It's taking responsibility, but then it's also forgiving those who hurt you. Whether it was real or perceived, then not that you need to really go to them either, but this is for you. And just understand something about forgiveness. When you forgive, it's not for them, it's for you. So you're not holding offense against them because a lot of times they're like, I'm not going to forgive them. Because they did this to me. Oh, no, no, I'll never forgive them. But when you have that unforgiveness in your heart, it's like you enslaving yourself to that person. You're giving them power and control over your life because now they have this button to push inside of you. You think of their name. You think of something that reminds you of them, and it brings up that same memory, that same pain. So that shows they have power over you. So forgiveness is not for them. It's for you. It doesn't mean that you're now okay or agreeing with, with what they did to you. It just means now you're not allowing them to have any kind of influence over your life or how you feel or how your day is going to go. That's what forgiveness is about. So forgive. So face it. Erase it, which is that forgiveness for yourself and others, and then replace it. You got to change your mindset about that because, you know, these temptations of wanting to feel like that or, or, or re-establish that root that caused that pain in your heart, it's going to be there. So you have to, you know, replace that with a new perspective, a new lens, a new belief, a new thing, a new habit. You have to replace it. Otherwise, you'll go right and default back to where you were. So how do you get healing in your soul from these woundings? Again, you face it. You erase it, and then you replace it. This is a, a process, a continued process for the rest of your life. And the faster that we acknowledge and we're more self-aware, we're going to get into this, some, of st some of this in uh, more for the emotional intelligence with that you know, self-awareness. But the faster that we are self-aware, that we have an offense, something going on in our soul, the faster we deal with it, the more that we're going to have a higher quality of living. We're going to have more peace. We're going to have more joy, more happiness. You know, We're not going to be reacting to people because we don't have any buttons to push. We're just going to live a lot happier, a lot better because we understand how our soul works. And this is just for ourselves. You know, you start to apply this for your relationships and understand how other people work too. Man, this will give you a very powerful understanding to where you have more mercy, you have more patience with people because you understand. Because you have the same stuff. So, again, your body, soul, and spirits, all three parts of who you are, all three are super important. And in this next slide, I'm going to give you a different slide, a different perspective, a different illustration about your soul because it is important. There's going to be two different other slides. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to stay on those too long, but just to give you another visual, 
another insight, another concept of what your soul is. So let's go to the next slide. All right, so here's that other slide that I told you about. So you can see that there's three parts of who we are, right? The, the outside is the body. That's the physical part. You know, the nerves, the brain, the organs, the cells, the five senses. That's the physical part, right, where we function. We, got, we start to go more towards the middle. We have our soul. That's our mind, emotions, and our will. That's the one that we're talking about, the last one. And you can see that's, you know, our conscious mind, thinking, reasoning. You know, this is where our heart is. Uh, our subconscious mind, our beliefs, our attitudes, our feelings, our emotions, our memories. This is where our will is. This is where we choose. And this involves, you know, our our, our nervous system and our doctrinal system, our immune systems. It all evolves around that. It all affects one another. We go more towards the middle. And that's our spirit. This is where we get meaning, purpose, love. That's the essence of who we are. So, again, you can see, you know, three parts that we are a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. And, again, this is just another illustration to show you that you are three parts and how essential it is for you to have a plan, you know, and to be consistent about developing yourself, loving yourself, taking care of yourself in each of these three areas so that you can master your life. Let's go to the next slide so I can show you another way of looking at this. All right, so here's another graphic. You know, you can see that's you, right? That's the silhouette of who you are. That's the physical body. Five senses, your physical vehicle. You start going to closer where that darker circle is. Looks like kind of like an eye, but the darker circle part. It's your soul, your beliefs, your attitude, your emotions, your memories, your personality, your will. And you go deeper into your spirit. This is your meaning, your purpose, your love. This is the essence of who you are. So here's just another, this is just another graphic. You know, to illustrate your body, soul, and spirit, how you are three parts. Now, the next slide is a video um, from a movie uh, that's going to give you a good illustration of this stuff going on inside of you. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. <gasps> 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 Hmm. Uh.
So if you guys haven't seen that movie, it's called Inside Out. It's a great example of what's going on inside of all of us at all times. I mean, we are emotional beings. Now, emotions can be, you know, something that really raises the quality of your life that really empowers you, or it's going to be something that really holds you back and destroys your life. So the question is, do you have emotions or do they have you? And you need to understand that the, your emotions are not the boss of you. You, need, you can interrupt a negative emotion and generate a new one, a positive one, and learn how to maintain that positive for longer periods of time. And also when a negative one comes up, and that's going to happen, you're going to be able to interrupt it so much more faster when you begin to understand these three parts of who you are, this inward reality, this inward world that's happening at all times, so that you can begin to have dominion over yourself in your inward world. So you're a body, soul, and spirit. Here's a great, you know, cartoon movie, Inside Out, that illustrates that pretty powerfully. So let's go to the next, the next uh, slide where we're going to get into the three parts of emotional intelligence. All right, so here are three parts that I'm going to be talking about when it comes to emotional intelligence. Now, first, just like kind of a review, okay? E emotional intelligence, this is EQ, and it's about self and others. Your EQ, your EQ, your emotional intelligence, starts with the ability to recognize emotions in yourself and in others. Again, the EQ, or your emotional intelligence, it all starts with the ability to recognize emotions in yourself and others. The next part is to be able to manage your own emotions and instead of trying to manage the emotions of others, you understand them. Because when you start to try to control the other's emotions, that's not really a self-control. That's not really a, an emotional intelligence because we cannot control anyone. And actually, when you try to control somebody, you're going to get some negative feedback, some negative reactions to them. And even if they listen to you short term, you're going to build this resentment in them. And long term, it's going to create a lot of issues in your relationship. So... Again, emotional intelligence, first first step, first part of it is you being able to recognize your own emotions. And then to be able to recognize emotions in others, and then be able to manage your own emotions and not try to control the emotions of others. We can still persuade, we can influence, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. But just understand the basis of emotional intelligence is, is having the ability to recognize, recognize emotions and to manage your own. Recognize emotions and manage your own. So let's get more into these three of these things. Uh, we're going to be talking about the power of self-awareness and self-control. We're going to talk about the power of empathy and understanding. And then we're going to talk about the power of being potential and solution-minded. So these are three, you know, things that I break up. I mean, as far as like emotional intelligence goes, you can go in so many directions. It's such a huge concept, a huge, you know, truth, a huge understanding, a huge teaching. But for this one, you know, I want to keep it more simple. I want to keep it very practical, uh, something that you can use immediately to create immediate results and long-term results. So I'm going to be going over three parts for emotional intelligence. Again, the power of self-awareness and self-control, the power of empathy and understanding, and the power of being potential and solution-minded. So let's get into each one of these individually and break them up so you can get to work and applying these things in your life. All right, so how can you fix something if you're not even aware that it is broken? Like if you don't even know there's a problem, if there's a need, if there's an opportunity there, you're not going to take action on it, right? Like it has to become, and even with that, like a lot of times people will realize, okay, yeah, there's a problem there. But it's not big enough of a problem or it's not causing enough pain or, you know, being uncomfortable in that to make somebody take action and actually do something about it. Like, so there has to be a, there's a self-awareness first, right, where you have to know there's something, an issue. That's the power of this emotional intelligence. First, you have to have the power of self-awareness. And you're not going to have self-control if you don't really have self-awareness, because how can you control something you're not really aware of in yourself? 
So in order to control your emotions, you have to be first aware of them. And not just aware that, yeah, I have emotions. Or, yeah, I can get angry. Or, yeah, yeah, sometimes I get sad. It's not, it's not being aware that you are emotional and that could happen. It's not aware. Of, it's, it's being aware as it's happening. And the faster you're aware of it, the faster you can do something about it. Now, I'm not saying, you know, oh, you can't have any kind of, you know, sorrow or, or anger. It's not that either because we're, we're humans. We're going to have those things, but it's what you do from that. It's what those cause you to, to do, whether to react, respond. The actions and behaviors that come from those things, that's what really matters. That's what's creating your external life. Like, and, and yes, it matters a lot even internally with yourself because if you start to, you know, have all these negative emotions in you, anger, sorrow, depression, anxiety, whatever, and you just learn how to live with it, and maybe you don't cause others to suffer from it, you know, you don't react so much, but you keep it all bottled in. At the end of the day, that's going to affect your physical body. You, you can get sick, you can, you know, go crazy, like there's so many things that could happen when you begin to hold all that stuff in, it's not healthy for you, and at some point, it's going to lower your energy, it's going to cause you to go into places where at the end of the day, it is affecting those that you love, those around you, so with, there has to be a self-awareness first, there is a power in that, when you are aware of self, when you are aware of your own emotional state, when you're aware that you have the power to change those whenever you want, when you're aware of that, when you can interrupt negative emotion and mindsets faster, come on, that, that betters your day. Like, just think about 24 hours. Man, then you sleep, yeah, well, it's supposed to be eight, but, you know, most of us don't sleep that much, right? But we have that rest of the day to, to do what? So the other 16 hours. 8, 16, 24, if we break it into threes, you know, a third, a third of it, you're, you're probably sleeping or doing some other stuff, right? So 16 hours to, to do a lot. Now, if you have a low quality emotional state, something like anxiety, depression, confusion, sorrow, you know, anger, low quality states, emotions. If you're in those, you know, what, two hours of the day? three hours of the day. Sometimes some people keep it the whole day. They keep it weeks. They keep it months. People hold on to stuff years and maybe they're not, you know, fully thinking about it at that time. But when you get anywhere near that topic, what happens? It's a button, right? It's a trigger and it begins to bring up, boom, all these emotions come up with that, that memory, because that shows that there's something that hasn't been dealt with. Now, when, when you have these things inside of you and you're not aware of them, you know, it messes up your life. So self-awareness goes much deeper than, oh, I'm feeling this. It's like, okay, why am I feeling this? Where, you know, do I want to feel this? Is this going to serve, you know, me and where I want to go? Like, yeah, sometimes, like, let's say somebody dies, you're going to be sad. Yes, that's proper, right? You're going to miss them. But even with that, like, what kind of perspective do you have as you mourn? Is it making it all about, you know all about you and and you're you're there just to be comforted and then if you are okay but for how long how long are you gonna hold it there or maybe you can you know be comforted but you get to the point where you have self-awareness of self you can manage your own but you can also be a support to other people around you during that grieving time or at least you're not reacting or isolating to where it's hurting other people too like there's there's a lot of levels of self awareness and self control, but it all starts with this knowing who you are, knowing okay that's an emotion. How do I identify that emotion? And then where is that emotion coming from? Okay, is this coming from you know something that I'm reacting to? What what button is this touching? Like even though like somebody said something or did something that isn't right. It's not saying that, you know, it's not going to bother you. But if you get angry, like that, they're controlling you at that point. So you don't want to get ever to the point where you're reacting to somebody. You always have self-control. And it doesn't mean you're not going to say anything or, you know, defend yourself. But you never lose it. You never say something that shows, you know, out of character. You always stay in control. And that, I mean, you always win like that. You always win rather than reacting and then, you know, you just feed off of each other and just start to argue and fight and see 
trying to make each other more wrong, focusing on who is right rather than what is right. You know, self-awareness, self-control goes a long way in all of our relationships and in every most important area of our life, self-awareness and self-control. So again, if you don't know that there's a problem, how are you going to fix it? So you need to understand, yes, I have some triggers. Yes, there are some emotions that are very strong in me, and yeah, they're not healthy. Okay, so if it's something that you deal with a lot, why? That's that's not the problem. It's a sign of something else. What what in you? What kind of, you know, things do you have going on inside of your soul, your mind, emotions, and will that are tied to some kind of memory, some kind of maybe abuse or, you know, something where it it wounded you. It, it made you have like a pain in your soul. It broke you. You need to sometimes go back to those things and not to stay there, not to dwell, not to blame, but to to face it. Because a lot of times buttons and triggers, you know, that are in us are due to those undealt with things. So this is a a, a part of the power of self-awareness and self-control. Like a lot of times people want to control themselves, but sometimes they just can't help it, right? Like they always say it too, like, I don't know, I just lost it. Usually I have control over myself, but they just said something, they did something that just pushed my button. It just pushed me over. I was just had it up to here, right? There's all these things that, that we say that are, are just proof that we have some buttons and triggers inside of us. And, and it's not giving right or reason to those people who are saying something or not doing something. It doesn't make it okay for them, but for us to react we can we can live at a higher place than that you know we we can be more mature than that to where we can say something but we're not reacting to them we're not giving them any of our energy we're not we're not moved we're not shaken we're not broken we're not offended we're not rejected like we can be more powerful than that than than allowing those things to happen when you have a level of self-awareness, knowing, you know, who you are, who you are not, your strengths and weaknesses, knowing that you might have some vulnerabilities because of some things in your past that has happened to you, some kind of, you know, uh, abuse, or you saw something, or something that someone did something to you, said something to you, whatever it is, it caused a pain in your soul. You need to be aware of those things. Heal. And I already talked about how to do that, the face, erase, replace, you face it, you get some forgiveness there for yourself and others. And then you have to change the story about it. Then there's changing your posture, right? Your face, uh, the things that you say, you know, all these different things create a different emotional state. Again, in order to control it for yourself, manage yourself, you have to be aware of it. Know what emotions are. Know where those stronger emotions come from and what those triggers are so that you can, you know, examine them. Know where those activation points are so you're more in control of who you are because you've looked at it. You're not surprised. <clears throat> now, when you do that, you're able to restrain, you know, your own impulses, emotions, desires. You know, this is even where self-motivation comes into play. Like, you're not waiting for somebody else to motivate you. You have a level of self-discipline even when you don't feel like doing it. And then you have a level of self-awareness and, and self-responsibility where you generate motivation for yourself so that you become self-motivated that's a part of the self-awareness self-control this is a part of emotional intelligence this is why 90 percent of the top performers in all industries are the ones with the highest eqs the ones with the highest emotional intelligence you know you can you can just work physically hard but that only goes so far you know you're dealing with people and you know and and with that, you have to have an emotional intelligence. It's all emotions, a transfer emotion. That's what sales is. So even if you want to get really good at sales, it starts right here. Self-awareness, self-control. You know, knowing that you can manage your own emotions, know what kind of emotion to create that best serves that time, that best serves the goal that's right before you, that's at hand. And then you control yourself to cause yourself to do the things that are in alignment to make those things happen over and over without anybody else that's self-awareness and self-control that's a very powerful thing that's a part of the emotional intelligence now we're going to go into the next one the next slide where we'll get into empathy and apathy all right now let's talk about the power of empathy and understanding and then even talk about apathy 
So empathy, what is empathy? It's the action of understanding. It's being aware of, it's being sensitive to, it's, you know, it's experiencing, you know, vicariously somebody else's feelings, thoughts, and experience one another. It's where, you know, you're even experiencing like the past with somebody else or their future or their feelings or thoughts, like where you're fully committed into what they're saying and you're making it all about them, where you actually kind of experience objectively you know, something that they're going through or gone through or thinking that they will go through. You know, it's like it's you're putting yourself in their shoes, like people say, but not but beyond in their shoes, you're walking in their shoes, you're living in their shoes, you're picturing how it is for them to get up in the morning to go through their day or or to feel exactly what they're feeling, even though maybe you don't see it the same way, but to put yourself into into their lenses, like put their glasses on put their lenses on and see it how they see it. Maybe you don't agree with it. Maybe you don't see it that way. Maybe you don't at all. Maybe what they see even seems like uh, an exaggeration or even a lie to you, but for them it's real. Real or perceived, it's real to them. So if, if you want to even to convince them otherwise, you first need to empathize make them feel understood because at that place they're going to begin to trust you and that's the power of this empathy and understanding because you build trust now with trust when somebody trusts you i mean you you i mean that's the basis for everything right there i mean for a relationship for a client for a coworker, you know for a leader for a parent like when you have trust you have influence you they give you a place to speak into their life, you know, in, in specific areas. Like, and the more trust, the more in different areas, the more influence you have. So when we learn how to have apathy, I mean, empathy, not apathy. When we learn to have empathy and understanding, man. So this is where you are being aware of, sensitive to somebody else. You're being fully, you know, in their shoes, fully, ex- like, in, even though you don't agree, you're picturing it, um, using your imagination, stirring up emotion that's attached to this imagination now of what they are going through and how they see it. That's a very powerful tool when it comes to emotional intelligence. Like, if you can do this, you'll become a very strong leader. Not only are you you know, having a self-awareness for yourself and self-control like we already talked about, but now we have an empathy where you're able to understand not just your emotions, but somebody else's. Where now you're able to not even make it about yourself at all. Like you have a self-awareness, self-control, and then you get to a place where you're not even making it about you. It's not about you at all. And like, it's fully about that other person. This is, this is empathy. And I'm telling you, there's a power. When somebody feels that, when they experience a genuine empathy, there is trust that's built. And from there, you can begin to share other things. And even like if you don't agree with what they're saying, if they feel understood first, not that you understand. That's one thing for you to understand. It's another thing for them to feel understood. So now that you understand, they feel understood, boom, there's like this understanding that's there, this intimacy, this into me you see, and they see you into you, and then there's a connection, a bond, you know, a trust that's built right there that you can do anything with now. So if you want to, maybe they're wrong, maybe they, you have a different perspective, so you first make them feel understood, you have the empathy, and then you bring what you want to share there. And now there's a more of a actual conversation there because they feel heard already. This is a negotiation tool. You know, you know, some of the most successful negotiators that do this professionally for FBI, for, for you know, people who are in high places that, that sell big deals in business, negotiators, they do, they have a high level of empathy where they fully make it about the other person's need, what their want is, how they feel. They understand that there is a, a power that you have to build there, a trust in order for them to buy, for them to listen, for them to go for the idea, for them to take action, for them to, you know, do something different than what they used to. They're, this is the power of empathy and understanding. Now, I, I've said apathy before, right? Well, this is the lack of feeling or emotion, the lack of interest and concern. This is the total opposite. That breaks connection, that breaks influence, that breaks relationship, that breaks deals. That When you have apathy, when you just lack emotion or feeling, like you're like, eh, 
People are not attracted to that. People are not drawn to that. People don't trust that. And it's not a good example. It's not a good leader. You're not going to have any kind of impact if you have apathy. If you lack interest or concern, people are not going to feel trust in you. Like They're not going to want to share their problems or have you answer their problem, bring solution, you know, hire you for something if you have apathy. like So you have to have empathy, understanding. And this is a very powerful, essential key for you to begin to develop an emotional intelligence. Let's go to the next slide and we'll be talking about potential and solution-minded. All right, so we're talking about emotional intelligence. And, you know, it started with talking about ourselves, you know, our body, soul, and spirit, what we're made up of. There are three parts. We need to master all three, have a development plan for all three, right? And then we started getting into more of the emotional part of the soul, the mind, emotions, and will. And this is where we, you know, begin to learn about emotional intelligence and the power of it. And, you know, how it it's important for everything that we do in our lives. Everything. And how 90% of top producers are the ones with the highest EQ, emotional intelligence. These are the ones who have the ability to recognize emotions in themselves. They, they are self-aware. They can control self. They are self-motivated when you have a high level of emotional intelligence. And not only that, but you can manage and control your own emotions. You're not reacting. You're able to not be moved by others. You, you know, you think clear because you're not... You don't have all this noise going on inside of you because you have self-awareness, self-control, right? And because of that, you're able to feel and sense other people. You're able to really be present and listen to others and have the power of, of empathy and understanding. And with there, that's, you know, you're able to create that trust, that influence. You know, you can use that for anything, right? And now we're going to get into the power of being potential and solution-minded. This is... You not being stuck on the problems, on the lack, on the need, on, you know, it's you being more resourceful. It's you being more creative, taking initiative. This is you, you know, looking past the problem into what is possible here. What are my options? What are the pros and cons to each option? Now let me choose and take action. You know, this is about seeing past the problem into, let's see, what is possible here? What are the possibilities? What are the opportunities? You know, it's, it's seeing past the problem into solutions, seeing the past the problem into the potential, into possibility. This is a discipline. This is a mindset. And this is a part of emotional intelligence. Because if you allow your emotions of fear, anxiety to make all this noise inside of you and you just keep staring at the problem, you're going to come up with solutions from that emotion that you're, that's running through your body. If it's fear. Desperation, irritation, anger, you know, the ideas that you're going to come up with to deal with that problem is going to come from that place. So what kind of ideas do you think you're going to get? You're not going to get the best ideas. You have to create a, a higher state, emotional state. This is a part of the emotional intelligence for yourself because you're creating your future through your actions, your words, your behaviors, your habits, right? So we need to make sure that we're doing the right things there. And in order to do that, we have to have the right state so to make sure we're making the right decisions and have the right energy to reach our goals. So the power of being potential and solution-minded helps you to do exactly that. This is a train, like a, you have to train yourself with a discipline to have like a mental garbage disposal where you don't have stinking thinking. You don't get into negative. You don't get into, oh my gosh, this is a problem. Like you're like, this is, okay, this is an issue. Okay, what are the opportunities here? What are the, the choices? What are the options? And you look at it. Doesn't mean you have to, have to like it, <clears throat> but you embrace it and you look at your options and you start to take action and you figure it out. Right, that's being solution and potential minded rather than being a victim or like stuck on the lack and creating low energy, reacting on others, you know, blaming others. Like, that's not going to get you anywhere. That's not an emotional intelligence. That's not how 90% of the top producers are. You have to be able to ha be more executing, seeing what the issue is, and moving on. This is high level emotional intelligence. So, not only do you have self awareness, self control, self discipline, self motivation. Not only that, but you're able to get out of yourself and empathize with other people, understand them to create the trust. And not only that, but you're able to, 
when any issues come up, whether it's with a person or uh, circumstances or economy, whatever it is, you begin to have a discipline because you have a high emotional intelligence where you see past the problem into what is potential, into possibilities, into what the solutions are, into your options, into opportunity, and you begin to take action and you keep moving. That's the power of potential and being solution-minded. This also creates a gratitude. You know, uh, you you live in an attitude of gratitude. You have a good, positive attitude. You know, you're not like, oh, this is happening to me. It's like this is happening for me. And you have just a higher level of thinking. This is the power of being potential and solution-minded. So, as you can see, this is, you know, very powerful stuff once you start to understand what it is first. You know, I do workshops, I do training, I have online courses that get, you know, even deeper with some more examples of, you know, practical things that you could begin doing. But these are, I want to, these are like foundational things right here, what I'm sharing with you of like, okay, first you need to understand these basics. Like you can build from here and start to exercise things, apply them, do some reps, right? Do it. But now you can see how there is power in emotional intelligence and why this is why. 90% of the top producers are the ones with the highest EQ. All right, so when it comes to self-awareness and self-control, I want to talk about a couple things that are really important when it comes to this. Like for you to really be strong inside of you, like to have an inward strength about you, like there has to be a self-awareness and and this has to do with, with three things that I want to talk about. And when you have these three things, it creates not only a self-awareness, but a, a powerful person. A powerful person that is not easily controlled by others. They don't have buttons where people are pushing. They don't have all these triggers. Like people who are in control, I'm talking about. Those people have these three things settled in themselves apart from anyone and anything else they have these three things i want to share with you settled inside of themselves so much that it, it causes them to be a very powerful person where they take responsibility in life they take action they take wise action they take consistent disciplined action and you know create the life that they want they achieve the goals that they want these are the ones who have again the the they're, they're top producers. They're the 90% of the top producers in every marketplace, the ones that have a higher emotional intelligence. And these three things right here, you need to have settled. Apart from anyone else, apart from your spouse, apart from your kids, apart from your, your, your business, your job, apart from you know your brand, apart from everything else, like you need to have these three things settled within you, in yourself, starting with yourself. And then you can do it for your relationship then you can do it for you know your your business or you know businesses like but it needs to start within yourself first here are the three things identity acceptance and purpose identity acceptance and purpose these are three things that you need to have settled in yourself think about it, like okay <clears throat> who are you like what is your identity first like who am i who am i not being clear on your strengths and weaknesses being clear about it like okay like uh that's a part of who i am i don't like it but you know i'm working on that but you know it and you and you once you really see like fully who you are your likes your dislikes your your fears your desires your passions your dreams you know your um your quirks your you know the things that you're not good at your weaknesses your things that you're really talented in your skills you know the your natural abilities like really getting clear on who you are that what makes you you what are your beliefs your morals your values you know all these different things that make you you who are you your identity and then you can move to the next one of acceptance, right? Now that I see, I know everything about who I am, the good and the bad, the strengths and the weaknesses, you know, I have this self-awareness, the right, the, the identity, then I can go to this acceptance where I fully accept myself with all the good and the bad. You know, when you really accept yourself, like you don't need other people's acceptance, like it doesn't mean you don't want it or you don't receive it when it comes. Of course you want it. Of course it feels good when somebody accepts you, when they like you, when they connect with you, when they encourage you. Like, it's nice, right? And when we get it, hey, take it. Enjoy it. Let it fill your soul. Let it empower you. Let it give you a good energy. Let it put a smile on your face. Yeah, accept it. 
but you don't expect it. You're not expecting it from people, and, and you're not expecting it because you don't need it. The thing is, like, if you don't need it and you expect it because you have this whole story inside of you, like, well, I did it, you should give me something back, and then you create a whole story of what that should be, you know, what you're getting back, and now that you don't get it, what happens? You feel rejected. You don't feel accepted. So when you have a acceptance for yourself, you know, nobody can reject you really because how can they take away something they never gave you, you know? Like this is something you've given yourself 100%. And if you have a relationship with God, you have full acceptance there. Like you know your identity in Him too. This is something that I believe that will really, you know, take these three things even deeper. You know, identity in God, you know, acceptance by God, a purpose, you know, with God. You know, these are all three things. But either way, you need to have these three, these three things settled. Who are you, who you are not, and then fully accept yourself. So you don't need the acceptance from other people, right? Uh, and then what are you, what is your purpose? What are you here for? How are you using the things that you're good at to impact and bring value? You know, your talents, your abilities, now that you know yourself, accepted yourself, how are you using yourself with a purpose on purpose? You know, what are your bigger goals? Are you a part of something bigger than yourself? And how are you adding to that? What is your part in it? What is your function in it? And once you start to get these three things really settled, this is where you become a, a very powerful person. You begin your emotional intelligence level, emotional intelligence level goes really high because you know who you are. You've accepted yourself. You know your purpose. And this has so much to do with the foundation of the self-awareness and self-control. Now you don't have buttons. Now you don't have triggers. Now you have clarity on who you are. You've accepted yourself. You know what you're doing. So this is where you get to a place in your life where nothing can move you. Let's go to the next thing and the next exercise. We're going to actually put, you know, give you something to do with this stuff now. All right, so let's do an exercise now on how to become self-aware. It's a self-reflection exercise that you can do to become self-aware like right now. Just by doing a couple things and then asking yourself some questions in the season that you're in right now, what you're dealing with, the problem, the situation, whatever it is, you begin to first become present by, by really focusing in on your breathing. So we're going to start taking some deep breaths, not in your chest, but breathing in your stomach, nice and slow, nice and deep. Let's go breathing in. Sitting up straight, standing up straight, chest out, being present, just paying attention, focusing on your breathing right now. So now as you keep breathing, as you're being present, conscious of your breathing, deep breathing, keep going. I'm going to ask you some questions and I want you to think of these answers for yourself as you keep breathing. Deep breath. So right now, what is it that you're really trying and wanting to achieve? Deep breath. Right now, in this time, in this season of your life, and what's going on in and around you right now, keep breathing. What are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to achieve? What's most, info what's most important right now? What's priority? Taking a deep breath. Now, with that in mind, the main things that you want to achieve during this time, what are you doing that's working to, to achieve that? Deep breath. What are you doing that is working towards what you're trying to achieve? Taking deep breaths. Now, next question as you're breathing. What am I doing that is slowing me down in what I'm trying to achieve? So first, what are you trying to achieve in this time, in this season, right now, with whatever's going on in and around you right now? What are you trying to achieve right now? What are you doing in achieving that that's working? And what are you doing that is slowing you down? Now, without that being questioned, uh, with all those questions right there, keep breathing. Now, what can you do to change? What can you do to change? Good. Take a deep breath. So again, it's what can you achieve? What are you 
doing that's working? What are you doing that's slowing you down? And what are the changes that you can make? It's a quick exercise that you can do to become self-aware. It's a self-reflection exercise. Another thing that you can do is begin to generate an emotion for yourself. So what emotional state are you in right now? Like you could be conscious and present. Like what are the emotions that are running through your body? You know, as soon as you can begin to identify that, now you need to decide, is that a... Is that the emotion that's best for me right now to to deal with what's before me, to achieve what I want to achieve, you know, to connect with who I want to connect with? What kind of energy, what kind of emotion do I need in me right now? And the one do I have that I do have right now is it is it in alignment? Is it the one that's going to best serve me right now? Be present of that. And if it's not, change it. Change it. Change your face. Change how you're moving, your movement. Change your breathing, change your thoughts, change what you're talking about. These are all the different things you can do to start to change your emotional state now. So right now, if you need a higher state, you begin to talk like this and sit like, you know, tall and stand tall and move around stronger. You have more certainty in your tone. And you just, you know, even if you're just, you know, creating that, it's not real at first. But once you begin to keep doing it, you actually generate that real emotion in yourself. So that's something you can also do. Another exercise you can do, you can just begin to learn how to generate certain emotions anytime. It's like an exercise where you stop. Okay, I'm going to generate joy. And you generate joy. Okay, I'm going to generate hope generate hope you know whatever high quality emotions you want to learn how to generate make it an exercise instead of like lifting weights you're generating emotion the faster you get at this the more you know a powerful person you're going to be all right something that you can do I'm going to teach you something about personalities because when you understand personalities, you're going to understand better how to have empathy and understanding with people and actually make them feel understood. Now, I always teach this, like when it comes to conflict resolution, negotiation, sales, it's the, when you, the faster you're able to make them feel understood, make them feel understood. Not for you to understand them, your product, you know, the benefits of your product, their needs, how it goes together. I mean, all that, yes, yes, you need to have that. But also to make them actually feel understood, for them to really trust and know, for them to have a sense of certainty that you understand what their need is, what their want is, you know, what, like, like that you have their best interests, you know, in, in your mind, like that's all you care about, like for them to really feel that. That's when, that's when they feel understood. That's when you create a real strong trust that you can do a lot of things with. So this is a, a teaching that I teach so that you're a better able to empathize, but also make them feel understood. Okay, because there's different types of personalities. And, you know, I don't know if you've heard um, the golden rule where it says, you know, treat others how you would want to be treated. Uh, I don't I don't believe that. I believe that's selfish in, in many ways, because what if they don't want to be treated? How you want to be treated and like you're really making it about you like how you would want to be treated so i believe in really understanding other people and connecting communicating to them how what, what the best way to communicate to them and the better skilled communicator is more adaptive you know more adaptive that we can be when we're communicating with different personalities different cultures different backgrounds different beliefs different you know cultures and values you know different right the better we're able to adapt and speak to everyone at their level you know about what's important to them in a way that they understand the best you're you're gonna win I mean, because you're going to be a better communicator. You're going to, you know, people are going to feel really understood by you. And no matter what you're doing in life, you're going to win when you know how to do this. So just even overall, like all the most important areas of your life have to do like with people, your relationships with them, your your ability or n not having the ability to be able to connect and communicate with them, right? That's going to determine the quality of life that you're living. So we need to better you know, our skills, develop our skills in communicating with people, all different types of people. And this has to do with, you know, empathy and understanding, right? Again, this is a part of the emotional intelligence that makes you powerful. 90% of all the top producers in every area have the highest EQ, the highest emotional intelligence. And this is a tool, I have a whole course on this, an online course, 
um, where I really break each personality down, you know, very well, and then even have like some live coaching, some live, you know, role playing, some examples, things like that of, of even cues that you can read and in, in expressions and body, how people are moving, um, of how to identify people's personalities in the first, you know, five, 10 seconds, which is amazing and, and very powerful for so many things. So I have a whole online course on that, but right here I'm going to give you just a basic understanding because it's a part of this emotional intelligence. It's a part of empathy and making them feel understood. So I teach um, personalities in in animals. So I teach the rhino, the lovebird, the sheep, and the owl. And there's two outward personalities and there's two inward personalities. Now, when, when you have a goal to make somebody feel understood, to make them feel understood, you want them to trust you, right? You want to, That's the whole goal is to build the trust, to connect with them. Now, people trust themselves the most. They feel most comfortable around themselves the most, right? So when you can create a space, a, a, an energy, a time when you're interacting with them where, they, where you feel familiar to them as them, like you, you seem like you're kind of like them, you're going to build the trust faster. So if you can identify the personality and then be that personality with them for a little bit of time, you start to create a, a stronger, deeper, faster connection with them um, than just, you know, just talking at a high level when they're at a low level or vice versa. You start to break connection. So for an example, let's just look at, okay, in the four personalities, the rhino, leopard, sheep, and owl, there's two outward, you know, extroverted personalities, and there's two inward or introverted personalities. The two extroverted ones, the two out, outward ones are the rhino and the lovebird. They have a higher energy. And then the lower ones, the lower energy is the sheep and the owl. These are the ones who uh, ask more questions, who are more diplomatic, sensitive, not risk takers. They don't want to make mistakes for different reasons, but they don't want to make mistakes. They want to do things right. They want to have things, you know, accurate. They want to have stability, certainty. Um, but the, the, the outward, the rhino and the lovebird, they are more you know, stronger, move forward personality, more, you know, one of them is more social than the other, but they're both more very, ex they're both expressive, they communicate, you know, they, they share what they're feeling, you can feel what they're feeling, so those are the, the outward personalities, so if you can just identify inward and outward, and start to do what I call mirror and match, you mirror their body language, you match their energy. Now, if you are normally an introvert and you're talking to an extrovert, that means you need to pump up your energy, right? You need to, you know, make stronger movements. You need to express more. You need to get your volume and, and your, your, your tone start to go up and down and like to be, it's more stimulating, right? Maybe you're not normally like that, but if you want to create a fast trust, make them feel understood faster, you got to match their energy for a little bit right away. Now, maybe you're normally, you're very expressive, right? Maybe you're an outward extroverted person. You're not shy. You can go to it. You're very direct. You know, you're, you can con you can have communication with people, but then maybe they're an introverted person. So if you come off too strong and too much, you can break connection there, break trust. So you have to mirror and match them to where you bring it down some a little bit. You, you relax a little bit. Maybe you slow down, you know, to your words and your tone changes. And you're more sincere, more sensitive. You know, just so they feel safe around you, start to build that connection, that trust, and then you can begin to create a, a stronger energy after that. But once they feel understood. So there's this is a, a simple tool of understanding, you know, the different personalities. Like there's the introverted, the extroverted, and you just mirror and match those because you want to create faster connection, faster trust with them, right? And then you go into, you know, deeper into the personalities of like, okay, if they're introverted, are they a sheep or an owl? And why does that matter? If they're extroverted, are they a rhino or a lovebird? Why does that matter? Because each one, they're going to, they value different things more than others, right? Like the rhino loves results. They want to get things done. They're not worried about how you feel. They're worried about what you're going to do. They want to have outcomes. They want their competitive the lovebird, that's another extrovert, they're more about fun, friends, and freedom. You know, they don't want to get all serious about result, results and goals. They want to enjoy life and have fun. You know, when you get to the introverted, peop, um, you know, personalities, you have the sheep who is more calm, cool, and collected. They're more worried about how people feel about them, what people are thinking about them. They're more people pleasers, but they're very loving and supportive and patient people. 
Then you have the owl who, you know, they're more analytical. They want to know all the information, statistics. They're worried about being perfect. And so it's, you're going to, when you identify the different personalities and the, what they value, you begin to talk their language. You use key words that resonate with them. You talk about, you know, things or situations that they value. And you know this just by understanding personalities. So this is a, another, you know, powerful tool for you to create understanding with people. And again, it's emotional intelligence because it's building trust with them. So understand, are they inward or outward? And begin to mirror and match that. And then if you want to know more about this, of course, you can go to the online uh, programs. You can go to either itsrichardmartinez.com or theriseacademy.com where um, there's all the online courses there. And, and this is on leadership on the four personalities. All right, so here's an application for you, something you can begin to do to, you know, strengthen your ability to imp to have empathy and understanding with people. And I talked about, you know, the mirror and match, right? So I want you to begin to do this on purpose and and develop your active listening skills as you're doing this mirror mirroring and matching. So identify the person you're going to talk to, you know, whether it's standing, sitting, doesn't matter if it's going to be for five minutes, it's going to be for a couple hours, doesn't matter, but go with intention. You look at the person, are they inward or are they outward? You know, you can see how they're standing, how they're smiling, the, if they say something, how they're moving, how they're, you know, sitting. You can tell if it's if they're more extroverted or in, introverted, right? You can tell. Pay attention. Now, first see that, and then you mirror and match. So if they're high energy, you pick up your energy. If they're happy energy, you make yourself more happy energy. If they're a lower, more sensitive, more calm energy, then you need, you need to mirror and match that, right? Now, as you're doing it, connect. Ask a question. And practice your skill of listening, the active listening, as you're mirror and matching. You're, you're mirroring still, you're still mirroring and matching, and you give, you're, you're, you're listening to them, and then you repeat something that they've said. You can rephrase it in your own words to make them really understand and see that, yeah, you're paying attention. You're giving them this gift, showing them, like, hey, I, I care about what you just said. Let me give you the gift by stopping you and, and telling you what I've heard you say so far. You know, so this is a real simple exercise. Identify inward or outward. You mirror and match. Start to have conversation. And then give them the gift where you stop them and then you begin to repeat in your own words what they just said to show them that you truly are listening. That's a uh, simple tool, some simple, uh, simple exercises, applications that you can do to help you to be able to, you know, have more empathy and understand with people. So practice that with intention. The power of being potential and solution-minded. You need to understand the power of perspective. Your perspective matters. You know, what you look for, you will find. So if you are looking for and constantly focused on negative, guess what? You're going to keep finding more. You're going to create more. It's going to be like self-fulfilling prophecies. And then you're going to be like, see? And you're going to feel like the whole world's against you all because of the stinking thinking, the inward conversation you're having because what you're looking for and what you look for, you'll find. But if you change your perspective, because again, your perspective matters. So now if you begin to be somebody who is always focused on being resourceful, so focusing on solutions, potential, positivity, on possibility, you know, then all of a sudden, guess what you're going to find because you're looking for it. Some people always find what? Lack, problems, negativity. Why? Because they look for it. Other people find resources, they find solutions, they find ideas, potential, positivity, they find, you know, the good things. Why? Because they're looking for it. So you'll, you'll, you'll find what you look for. You know, what you look for, you will find. This has to do with your perspective, the lenses that you begin to choose to have on as you're looking at things, you know, perspective about your past. How do you look at your past? You know, are you looking at it like, oh, I went without, or man, I was abused, or nobody loves me? Like, you know, we all have different things, stories, right? And we need to figure out how did that impact our perspective now? And what part of it is good, what part of it is bad? And start to change the bad stuff so we don't have these lenses, these beliefs that are really limiting our present and our future. So what is your perspective about your past? You have guilt, shame condemning yourself, 
because that's a sign of something that you need to, you know, change your lens about something in your past because you don't want your past to become your prison, right? So what is your perspective about your past? What is your perspective about your present? Do you, are you content, not content? Do you feel like you're not good enough? You're not at the place where you should be? Are you beating yourself up because of your present situation? Or are you starting to make, you know, focus on, it depends what your perspective about it. You can be like, oh, why am I here? I can't believe I'm not there yet. You know, or are you looking at where you are now and taking responsibility and making changes that you, that you want? What is your perspective about the present? About your future situation, I mean, your present situation. How about your future? What is your perspective about your future? Are you, you know, in doubt? Are you afraid? Are you unclear? Do you have anxiety when you start thinking about the future? Do you, you know, maybe not even care, have apathy, where you're like, uh, whatever, whatever happens, happens. You know, what is your perspective about your future? Are you excited about it? Do you have clarity? Do you have goals? Do you have desire? Do you have passion to do something? Do you, are you contributing? Do you want, you know, something, part of something bigger than yourself? What is your perspective about your future? Perspective really makes a huge difference in your quality of life and where your future is going to go. How you are looking at things now is going to determine what kind of things you say, what kind of things you plant in your actions now. And that's going to become, you know, your harvest soon. Like you, everything you're doing now through your perspective, is like seed, your, your future in seed form. Your thoughts, your words, your actions, your behaviors, your habits, where you're spending your time, yourself, your wealth, like all those things that you're doing right now because of your, your perspective, your current perspective, that's producing your future. So <clears throat> a powerful person will begin to build their body, their soul, and their spirit, all three parts of who they are, right? That's what we've been talking about, this emotional intelligence. They're going to have a powerful perspective about their past, about their present, and their future. And they're going to be able to manage themselves and not react to others because they understand this emotional intelligence. So when you begin to have this power, this being, this potential and solution mindedness, this is a very strong mindset for you to have of like, okay, how am I going to look at things? You need to be somebody who disciplines your mind. And begins to look and f to find the resources, to find the solutions, to find the potential, for, to find the positivity, to find the possibility. That's what you are constantly searching for, knocking for, calling for, asking for, you know, searching. Like, that's what you're, you're seeking and that's what you're going to find. So do you have a positive perspective or do you have a negative, you know, perspective? Do you have a lack perspective? Do you have an abundant perspective? perspective do you have a fearful perspective or do you have a faith-filled perspective what kind of perspective do you have about the things around in your life and how can you begin to generate a, a more of a potential and solution perspective because now that you know your perspective is directly correct you know defining your future and the quality of it you need to you know change the lens have some self-awareness and seeing where do i need to change because your perspective is your power All right, so I'm going to give you a tool, something that you can use uh, in creating influence and in creating leverage with other people, um, something for you to be a better leader with, a better parent, a better person, you know, who is connecting with other people to make them feel understood more. Um, this is like a, a very practical and powerful tool for emotional intelligence to be able to connect with the emotions of others at, at a deeper way. To where you, you create, this is, I mean, this tool has opened so many doors for me in business, in sales, in relationships. Like, this tool is so simple, but so powerful because you're hitting at the core needs of people. And and it creates a, a people feeling really known. It makes them feel understood. It makes them feel encouraged and empowered all at the same time. Accepted, encouraged, empowered, acknowledged, recognized, known. Like it hits all these different core things that people really want and need. Like you're able to do it with this very simple tool um, in a very quick interaction with somebody. So I call it the character compliments. Character compliments. And again, this creates a very deep connection with anybody who you want to do it with. So this is what you do. So you can do it with a stranger. You can do it with your child. You can do it with your spouse. You can do it with a co-worker. You can do it with anybody. 
Okay, the more that you do it, I promise you, the better your life will be. People, I mean, even like in business, people will come in and close deals for you. Like where you're not even having to close them or sell to them because they just feel so connected to you that they just want what you have. And now they're asking you for it because they feel so connected. That's what this tool does uh, for, for you, okay? So character compliments. So you just look at a person. Think of that person or look at them. If it's a stranger, they're right in front of you. You can do it that quickly, that easily too. If it's somebody that, you know, you known, you can think about it longer, right? You can actually write it down. You can write it in a letter and send it to them. You could uh, create a card or you can just, you know, even more powerfully tell them face to face. So think of a person right now, just one person. One person that you want to compliment, that you want to encourage, that you want to connect with, that you want to create influence with, that you want to sell to, whatever it is. The, the person that you really want to connect in a deeper way with. Okay? Think of that person. Now, What when you think of them, when you look at them, what are the three words that come to your mind right away about them? Good things. Things that are encouraging. Things that are positive. Like, what are the three things that come to your mind when you think about this person, when you look at this person, you know, it could be like, oh, they just seem like a very patient person. They seem like a hard worker. They seem very loving. They seem like good listener. They seem um, like they're very confident, like they're very certain. They're very direct, like they're very strong. You know, whatever comes to your mind right away, don't doubt it. Just even if you've never met them, I'm telling you, this is it works. You just look at them and you just go with your gut. Those first three things that come to your mind about that person. Now, if you already know this person, you can be more intentional, more intentional, more strategic. That's good. So get those three things in your mind or on paper, right? Those three words. So it can be strong, you know, listen, listener, uh, giving, loyal, whatever. Just think of a word. Now, you're not going to just go say that word, right? Because it would be kind of weird if you just walk up to them and say, you know, strong. They're going to be like, what the heck are you talking about, right? So we have to put it into a sentence now to kind of define what do we mean when we say that about them. Like, what do we mean by that? So if I look at somebody and I say, you know, if I look at them and I think, you know, um, caring, I think confident, and I think um, risk taker. Caring, confident, risk taker. And that's the first three things that come to my mind. So I'm not going to just say, hey, caring, com you know, confident, and risk taker. I'm going to put it into a sentence where it makes sense to them. It, it ex kind of explains wh what do I mean by that. So, hey, I, 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 I can, can I share something with you? And they're going to be like, sure. Well, I just feel like you're very, you know, I want to share something about you that I just see you as a very caring person. Now you're going to get their attention, right? So, yeah, you seem very caring because I see you doing this. Or you seem like you're – even – I don't even know them. I can say you seem like the type of person who cares for people genuinely. Like you really have a heart for people. You like to help people. Like when you help them or you can protect them in some way, like it makes you feel really good and important and significant. Like, you, like it's a part of your purpose when you care for people. So now you put it into a sentence, right? And now you're connecting to something deeper in them. And now you're going to see their eyes begin to light up like, wow, thank you. And then I also see that, you know, you're very confident. And I begin to put that in a word, in a sentence too and define it, right? Like you're confident, not because like you, you seem arrogant, but you just seem to have this like acceptance about yourself or you have this confidence where you're not trying to please people, but you're just being like this sense of freedom. Wow, like that's going to make them feel really good, right? And then you go into the risk taker. Like, yeah, and with this confidence, like you're able to take some risk because you're like, even if it's a, a wrong, you know, decision, you don't beat yourself up and you know that you can figure it out after that. So I can see like you're very, you know, caring. You're very confident and, you know, you're, you're a risk taker. So now that you've kind of put it all together into a sentence and defined it and explained it, what do you think that does to somebody when they hear that? Very powerful, Right. Like when you, these are not just, you know, compliments on how they look. You know, these are character compliments of who they are. So when you begin to get good at this and you do it intentionally with more people, you're, you're going to hit some very deep buttons in them and they're going to feel deeply known by you, more known by, 
by you than than people in their own family and you can be a total stranger they're going to feel so understood and known by you so encouraged and edified that it builds an instant connection a trust an influence with them when you begin to do this this simple tool of character compliments so go pick a few people today go do it go apply it you know at least do one word hey you seem like you're like this and and then define it for them and tell them what that good what that will do in their life and their future if they keep using that go try it and watch what it does all right so now we're at the end of the course for the emotional intelligence just wanted to thank you guys for going through it hope this added value to you um give me some comments let me know what you guys think about it if you have any questions any you know anything that kind of gave some light bulb, you know, aha moments for you. I would love to hear about that. Uh, maybe there's some more insight or maybe a question that you have. Um, comment. Let me know. Would love to, you know, answer those things. Love to add more value to you in any way. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thanks again. It's Richard Martinez uh, with the Life Mastery System and the Rise Academy. All right. So now we're at the end of the course for the emotional intelligence. Just wanted to thank you guys for going through it. Hope this added value to you. Um, give me some comments. Let me know what you guys think about it. If you have any questions, any you know anything that kind of gave some light bulb, you know, aha moments for you, I would love to hear about that. Uh, maybe there's some more insight or maybe a question that you have. Um, comment. Let me know. Would love to you know answer those things. Love to add more value to you in any way. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thanks again. It's Richard Martinez uh, with the Life Mastery System and the Rise Academy.